The Webb telescope looks so far out that it's capturing light that's been traveling for over 13 billion years. However, the universe has been expanding, causing the light to stretch. For the most distant galaxies, we're looking back in time almost to the Big Bang. The Big Bang stands as a definitive narrative of modern cosmology, boldly asserting that our universe had a beginning and possesses a finite age. However, the concept of a singular cosmic beginning, followed by billions of years of cosmic expansion, has faced skepticism since its inception, and doubters have challenged its validity within mainstream cosmology. Join us on this cosmic journey Brian Cox, James Webb insane discovery could destroy the universe. Doubts about the Big Bang largely dissipated in the 1960s with the discovery of the cosmic microwave background, a pervasive radiation buzz that aligns coherently as a remnant from the universe's early hot era. Nevertheless, doubts have persisted over time and gained traction recently due to groundbreaking revelations from the James Webb Space Telescope. In a stunning observation, NASA's time machine, the JWST, which has the capability of detecting 13 billion year old light, as explained by the famous British physicist Brian Cox, identified an inconceivable mass of galaxies at the edge of the observable universe. This discovery has challenged the validity of the Big Bang theory. Now, the question is, could it be time to reshape our understanding of the cosmos and our existence entirely? Let's dive in to find out. The Hubble telescope was not sensitive enough to detect that light, but the web can see the formation of the first galaxies. It's essentially looking all the way back to very close to the beginning of time, and that's crucial because we're not entirely sure how those first galaxies formed. We can see that it's microwaves because the light has been stretched so much by the expansion of the universe. The problem with light is that in those earliest times, the universe was so hot and dense that light couldn't travel through it, making it opaque. So you can't use light to go back earlier than that. However, with the technology we have now to detect colliding black holes, we might one day probe right back to the Big Bang and determine whether or not that's the origin of time. The concept of the Big Bang traces back to the 1920s and 1930s when observations of distant galaxies revealed a peculiar pattern. The farther away they were, the faster they seemed to recede. Following Albert Einstein's general relativity predictions, a static universe would be gravitationally unstable, necessitating either a divergence or a collapse if space adhered to his laws. The observation of the apparent recession taught us that the universe is presently expanding, implying that things were closer together in the distant past. The expansion of the universe not only signifies increasing distances over time, but also entails the stretching of light wavelengths as we progress through time. Since wavelength corresponds to energy, with shorter wavelengths being more energetic, the universe cools as it ages, indicating hotter conditions in the past. If we trace this expansion back far enough, we reach a point where everything was so hot that neutral atoms couldn't form. According to this scenario, we should detect a residual radiation glow today in all directions, having cooled to just a few degrees above absolute zero. The groundbreaking discovery of this cosmic microwave background in 1964 by Arno Penzias and Bob Wilson served as a stunning confirmation of the Big Bang. The temptation lies in continuing this exploration backward in time to an era when the universe was even hotter, denser, and more compact. It's really the light from the origin of the universe. If you have an old FM receiver and you tune between channels without capturing a station, you'll hear noise. If you have a good radio set, 1-2 of 1% of that noise is actually the sound of the Big Bang. As we trace back in time, we encounter a period when it was too hot for atomic nuclei to form, causing radiation so intense that it could break apart any bound protons and neutrons. During this energetic phase, matter and antimatter pairs could spontaneously emerge. Further back, protons and neutrons disintegrate into a quark-gluon plasma, where the universe reaches densities surpassing those inside an atomic nucleus. Ultimately, the density and temperature reach infinite values, representing a singularity where all matter and energy converge into a single point, signifying the breakdown of the laws of physics. This singularity not only marks the point where the laws of physics falter, but is also perceived as the origin of space and time, encapsulated in the fundamental concept of the Big Bang. Every aspect of this journey except for the final singularity has been substantiated. Quark-gluon plasma has been synthesized in laboratories, matter-antimatter pairs have been created, and calculations aligning with the Big Bang's predictions have been confirmed through measurements of early universe elements and their abundances. Moving forward, observations have extended to measuring fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background, providing insights into the formation and growth of gravitationally bound structures like stars and galaxies.
While the Big Bang theory demonstrates remarkable agreement between theory and observation, the universe as we perceive it presents certain features and enigmas that the Big Bang alone doesn't entirely elucidate. If everything originated from a singular point within a finite time frame, one would anticipate varied temperatures in different regions of space, as these regions wouldn't have had the chance to interact and exchange particles, radiation, or information. Moreover, remnants from the earliest hottest periods, such as magnetic monopoles and topological defects, and some degree of spatial curvature, should exist. Since a singularity originated Big Ben lacks a mechanism to balance the initial expansion rate with total matter and energy density. Contrary to these expectations, the universe maintains a uniform temperature across all regions, lacks high energy relics, and exhibits perfect spatial flatness in every direction. This leads to two possibilities. Either the universe inexplicably possessed these properties from its inception, or there exists a scientific explanation, a mechanism that orchestrated the universe's emergence with these specific properties. On December 7, 1979, physicist Alan Guff had a groundbreaking realization suggesting an early period of exponential expansion preceding the Big Bang. The phenomenon we now recognize as cosmic inflation could account for the universe being endowed with these specific properties from the outset. The end of inflation would then mark the transition giving rise to the subsequent hot Big Bang. In the realm of science, one cannot simply introduce an additional idea into an existing theory and claim superiority over the new one. The burden of proof for a new theory is notably stringent. Persistent doubts surrounding established theories have recently heightened, fueled by groundbreaking revelations from the James Webb Space Telescope exploring the early universe. In its inaugural year of scientific operations, the $1 and billion infrared telescope has provided breathtaking glimpses of the nascent universe, unveiling surprisingly bright galaxies from a time when the cosmos was in its infancy. With its 6.5-meter mirror, the JWST was specifically crafted to investigate this early era, a domain mostly beyond the reach of its predecessor, the 2.4-meter Hubble Space Telescope. The JWST's observations have left researchers astounded, grappling with the implications of their findings. According to the Standard Model of Cosmology, Following the fiery Big Bang around 13.8 billion years ago, the universe underwent cooling, and energy transformed into matter over the first few hundred million years. This matter coalesced, giving rise to the first generation of stars and galaxies. While astronomers believed they had a solid grasp of this process, the JWST's preliminary outcomes suggest that stars and galaxies might have formed at a much more accelerated pace than previously envisioned. Headlines have even proclaimed that the telescope has essentially broken the universe and overturned models of cosmic history. However, following subsequent data analysis from the JWST, some of the initial striking findings have been dismissed, and new simulations can now accommodate a few of the peculiar observations. Certain bright, massive and early galaxies persist in challenging theorists, implying that our comprehension may undergo shifts in the years to come. Priyamvada Natarajan, a theoretical astrophysicist at Yale University, emphasizes that current data hasn't broken the universe, but intriguing potential tensions are emerging on different scales. Resolving these tensions will necessitate researchers reassessing their foundational assumptions about galactic evolution, potentially introducing new ideas while relegating others to the cosmic dustbin. It's noteworthy that the discovery of these early galaxies is not a recent occurrence. In May 2009, astronauts installed one of Hubble's crucial instruments, the Wide Field Camera 3, WFC3, vastly enhancing the telescope's infrared vision. As the universe expands, light traveling through space gets stretched into longer wavelengths, or the redder portions of the electromagnetic spectrum. The oldest entities therefore become visible in the infrared, beyond the reach of shorter ultraviolet or visible wavelengths. WFC3 empowered Hubble to capture light from remarkable objects, including the galaxy GNZ-11, which existed when our universe was a mere 3% of its current age, or approximately 400 million years old. However, Hubble faced limitations in exploring this early epoch, with few visible big bright galaxies due to constraints in its instruments, hindering astronomers from witnessing the very beginnings of galaxy formation. Upon the JWST launch in December 2021, Scientists rapidly dismissed the initial possibility of no galaxies existing within the first 500 million years after the Big Bang. The discovery of the galaxy class E12, approximately 50 million years older than GNZ11, and subsequent JWST observations, revealing numerous galaxies potentially as early as 180 million years after the Big Bang, refuted the earlier notion. J. N. Cardaltep, 
an astrophysicist at the Rochester Institute of Technology, notes the surprise among researchers at the abundance of bright galaxies detected with the JWST and their unexpected ease of identification. Additionally, these galaxies may be more massive than previously theorized. In the initial period after the Big Bang, intense conditions prevented the settling and condensation of matter into entities like stars and galaxies. Radiation generated by matter-particle collisions was in equilibrium with the rate of particle creation and destruction. Consequently, the radiation pressure hindered gravity's ability to initiate the collapse of the first stars. For an extended duration, the cosmos remained a glowing soup of hot particles, experiencing gradual cooling over time. As this process unfolded, atoms began to form as nuclei captured electrons. The formation of neutral hydrogen atoms allowed the light to traverse the universe, setting the stage for gravity to foster the formation of the earliest stars and galaxies. When the first stars ignited, they initiated a new era known as the Epoch of Reionization, marking the universe's second phase transition. Radiation emitted by early stars and galaxies reionized the neutral atoms, restoring the universe to its ionized state. It is during this transition from neutral to ionized atoms that these bright early galaxies likely emerged. The timeline for the formation of the earliest galaxies remains uncertain, but researchers are certain that it occurred rapidly, possibly within a few hundred million years following the Big Bang. Theorists are currently grappling with the implications of the JWST's findings, as the early galaxies appear surprisingly luminous, dense and massive, compared to expectations. If such massive galaxies indeed existed during the epoch of reionization, this could suggest that star formation processes were more efficient than previously assumed, possibly indicating an overestimation of the time required for stellar birth. Richard Ellis, an astronomer at University College London, highlights the puzzling nature of these observations, as larger galaxies should experience gravitational interactions that disrupt star formation, leading to dimmer systems. Additionally, galaxies appear to have formed in abundance, surpassing predictions from cosmological models. Galaxies like these would have required rapid, almost flawless assembly, forming vast numbers of stars in a short time frame while competing with intense radiative feedback that would impede further star formation. Numerous avenues could explain the emergence of these galaxies. One possibility is that the earliest galaxies primarily hosted massive, short-lived stars known as Population 3 stars, distinct from the stars observed today. Such stars would quickly exhaust their nuclear fuel and explode as supernova, seeding their host galaxies with heavier elements, a process that would foster even more efficient star formation. Another potential factor is the existence of black holes within galaxies, which could fuel bursts of rapid growth in these early systems. However, challenges remain in verifying these ideas, particularly given the high mass estimates for these early galaxies, which pose theoretical difficulties. One of the most pressing challenges for astronomers is reconciling the JWST's discoveries with existing cosmological models. While these models have successfully described the large-scale structure of the universe in a cosmic microwave background, the early galaxies observed by the JWST might require adjustments to our understanding of galaxy formation and evolution. Some astronomers argue that the discrepancies between the JWST's findings and current models may necessitate a re-evaluation of the parameters used in these models. For example, researchers may need to reconsider the role of dark matter in the early universe or explore alternative explanations for the rapid formation of massive galaxies. As researchers continue to analyze the JWST data and refine their models, the possibility remains that our understanding of the early universe could undergo a significant transformation. However, it's also possible that the discrepancies will be resolved without requiring a complete overhaul of current cosmological theories. For now, the JWST's discoveries have injected a sense of excitement and curiosity into the field of astronomy, prompting scientists to explore new ideas and rethink old assumptions about the universe's origins. The James Webb Space Telescope is the first step in answering some of the deepest questions about our existence. What are we? Where did we come from? And are we alone? Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Tell us your opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries signing off.